Hello, and my sincerest of greetings to the Senate Judiciary Committee, Committee Chairperson Terry Murphy, as well as the rest of the committee members. I'd like to approach you today regarding Senate Bill 310 and apologize profusely for not being able to testify in person. Unfortunately, I had to leave state to come and attend to some work that I had to do in Florida as a resolutions coordinator for Florida Cannabis Action Network. So. I have multiple jobs and wear many hats, but that doesn't mean that Montana is not close to my heart. And I've been following this bill very closely, and I really hope that you folks will get in and support behind it. Um, the bill that I'm referencing is Senate Bill Number 310 brought before you for by Senator David Wansenreed. Thank you very much, Senator Wansenreed. This bill right here, 310, you guys are having a hearing on it on... February 21st at 9 a.m. in the Senate Judiciary Room 303, where I will be watching from afar. I definitely intend to watch that uh, hearing as it progresses. I sincerely hope that you will consider passing Senate Bill 310 and get it off to the House so that we can help our veterans in the state of Montana. Um, I do have some scientific data I'm going to approach or attach to this YouTube testimony for you. And I hope you'll follow the links and go and see what I'm talking about. But we'll talk about it in brief discussion here as well. I'll try to keep it limited to three to five minutes here. I am Heidi Hanford from Lincoln, Montana, speaking on behalf of patients out of time and patients in Montana. Many patients in Montana are out of time. Uh, this is a veterans bill in my, uh, my, in my eyes and my mind. Many of our veterans that I know personally suffer from PTSD as well as many civilians wind up with PTSD for many different reasons or issues. Uh, PTSD is a prevalence in our veteran community. There are many suicides, the guys don't sleep, they wind up on tons of meds and, and those type of things. So it is a severe issue and I really hope you guys will look at you know, supporting our veterans. They really need this medicine. And I have studies here that will prove that cannabis does, in effect, help veterans with their issues. Um, as many of you may know, a lot of uh, PTSD is fear and anxiety based. Uh, that's why typically at a lot of the PTSD hearings, even the one we had last session, uh, people just, they didn't show up. And the biggest problem with the veterans not making it there was fear and anxiety. They do suffer it. It is truly a part of what they go through. They've been through war zone uh, conditions and have been in war zones, and a lot of them bring that home with them and it haunts them forever. So they need to be able to take advantage of and have access to medicine that will help them be non-toxic and not have them addicted to a lot of the meds like what happens with the big pharma medications and traditional therapies that are available. So I truly hope you'll look at this and support. I will be attaching these three scientific reports to my testimony as well. This one here is where they're talking about cannabinoids prevent the development of behavioral and endocrine alterations in a rat model of intense stress. So I will attach that. We do have human studies as well, but you know how studies go. Uh, you have to work through the animal model before you get to the human model. So I hope you'll look at that when they talk about stress and the reactions and what happens here. The endocannabinoid system is a wonderful thing, and that's what cannabis affects. Uh, with what's happened in Montana with SB 423, we really need this access for veterans for medicine because it will help them decrease their stress, their fear, the anxiety levels, help them sleep and get off of these meds. So that right there is a very important component. The next study I will also be providing is cannabidiol, a cannabis sativa constituent as an anxiolytic drug showing that it reduces anxiety. And this is also with human models. So I will definitely get this study to you as well. And reducing anxiety is a huge deal for a lot of these veterans. They get very anxious every day, even getting out of bed. I don't know if you guys think about it, but when these guys, you know, 4th of July fireworks were going off, it was loud where I was. And all I could think about was, wow, what happened to all of our veterans? Are they hiding under the bed? Because it really did sound like a war zone. And I guess maybe I think about that stuff, but that is a high anxiety and there's many things that happen to them every day that affects that. And you know, with cannabis, everybody wants to fall back on the, oh, they just want to get high or they just want to get stoned. No, that's not what this is about. If you read some of the scientific research, you'll find that cannabidiol actually is what is very, very good for anti-anxiety and it has no psychoactive effects. So 
that is very beneficial. And if you really look at some of the meds that these veterans are given, or anybody who is on P who has who suffers from PTSD, they are giving a multitude of medications that are highly addictive, and in a majority of instances and circumstances, they do not work. So, if cannabis works for them, why do we want to take away even one more option? So I hope you would expand the program, support our veterans with this bill. They really do need it. And then I'll point out here my third study I will be attaching to this YouTube test testimony through an issue upload. So you'll just be able to click on all the links in this one little link and find them all. But this is cannabinoid receptor activation in the basal lateral amygdala blocks the effects of stress on the conditioning and extinction of inhibitory avoidance. So if you go and look at that, it talks about fear inhibition. And that's a huge thing that we need to work on with our veterans. They come out very fearful. Um, that, that's, you know, a lot of people look at our vets and they are proud warriors. I'm proud of everybody who served our country and fought for my rights. But they do have a lot of fear in there. They've just been trained so that you don't see it. So they may not look sick on the outside, but they may have a lot of things going on on the inside that really do need help. So I really hope you will look with compassion and sincerity. Look at these studies. They're true studies that are happening out here. And there's a whole plethora more. If you just go and look and search, go to Google, go to PubMed, and go and type in post-traumatic stress disorder and cannabinoids, not marijuana. It, we're, we're, the, the true name of the plant and the medicine is cannabis, and we're dealing with cannabinoids and the endocannabinoid system. Marijuana is a slang term. So if you Google for marijuana, you're going to wind up with slang and whatever you get with that. So please, you know, go to PubMed, look this stuff up, post-traumatic stress disorder and uh, cannabinoids, C-A-N-N-A-B-I-N-O-I-D-S. And I will also have that in here for you. You'll be able to look it up in these studies. So thank you so very much for your time. Sorry if I ran over a little bit. I'll be available for calls at any time at 202-760-1924. That number is 202-760-1924. Or you can also email me at cashyslaw at gmail.com. That's cashyslaw at gmail.com. Please be sure and show our veterans your support and that you really do care about them, especially when they suffer from such a debilitating disease as PTSD. It really is not a disease for candies. There's some very tough men out there and tough women who have suffered from PTSD. And I hope we can afford to give them some relief by simply adding this as a condition with SB 310. Please vote do pass and get this through and let's make this part of a condition so that we can help our veterans. Thank you so much for your time. Truly appreciate it. I wish I was there to see you in person and I will be returning soon. So then I'll be back in person. Good to see you folks. Thank you so much.